Okay. All praises to the Most High. Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless you. All praises to the Lord, brothers and sisters online. We hope you're good. We hope you're keeping the Sabbath day holy as always. Okay. Heavenly Father, we, we pray, Father, that you guide us this day in the name of your Son, the Christ. But watch this. Let me show you something, man. Men and women. Don't be discouraged when people leave us. Because right now, some of them are happy because they think mm, certain things are not taking place. <coughs> Don't worry about that. The most said God is with us. You understand? The Lord is with us. Don't lose faith. People will come, people will go. Don't get too attached. Focus on the word of the most high God of heaven and earth. Give me the book of John 6 now. John 6. Um, read verse 66. Read verse 65, actually. You know what? 64. Hmm. 63. Let's start there, man. Read John 6, 63. Come on. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickens you. It is the spirit that quickens you. The word quickens means to change. It is the spirit that forces you to change your way. To change your ways to the laws of God. That's what the spirit does. It changes you. The laws of God is supposed to change you. Read. The flesh profited nothing. The flesh will not profit you because why? The flesh, what does the flesh want? To fulfill the last thereof. Read. The words that I speak unto you. The words that I speak unto you, come on. They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. And they are life. This is the Messiah speaking, man. He says, the words that he spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. Go ahead. But there, but there are some of you that believe not. Because why? In verse 63, they are required to change. That's why they don't believe. That's why I said, but there are some of you which believe not. Why they don't believe is because they don't want to be quickened. Being quickened is a process that requires you to change and apply yourself. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 32. Okay. Verse 24. Sirach 32, 24. He says, but there are some of you which don't believe, which believe not. Okay? Sirach 32, read verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 24. Read. He that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. That's what it means to believe. So that's why it says, there are some of you which believe not. He says, those that don't believe is because they don't want to take heed to the commandments. Because taking you to the commandments requires you to be quickened. Requires you to be changed. You understand? Read. And he that trusted in him shall fare never the worse. You trust in him. The him is the Lord. In the same verse. You understand? Things are not going to go wrong for you when you trust in the Lord with all your heart. Go back. John 6 verse 64. The book of John chapter 6 verse 64. It put some power in your reading, man. Yes, Come sir. on. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 64. Come on. But there are some of you that believe not. But there are some of you which believe not, who don't want to keep the commandments, that they may be quickened. Read. For Jesus knew from the beginning mm -hmm. who they were that believe not. You see that? Who they were that believe not. The same way Christ from the beginning, we know also. Because the Spirit of Christ is in us. Read. And who should betray him? And who should betray him? The same way Christ knew, they said, we also know. Read. And he said, mm -hmm. Therefore, say, say, therefore said I unto you, come on, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. You see what he's saying? He says, Nobody can come into this truth except the Father has sent him. You understand? So those that come and they get offended at the scriptures, they leave. Guess what? They were not of us. They were not of us. Yes, they were they, they were they looked like they were with us, but they were not with us because why? The whole time they were just being offended by everything. You understand? They were just being offended because they are those that don't believe. Okay? Read. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Read. From that time many of his disciples went back. And walk no more with him. You see that? It says from that time when they got offended by the things he said, what he taught. It says from that time, many, many, he didn't say one, many of his disciples says they went back into the world and walk no more with him. So it's not a new thing. It has happened before. Many, because why? They didn't want to be quickened. They didn't want to change. 
They didn't want to apply the scriptures. They got offended by it. You understand? So they did betray the Son of Man. Read. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, mm -hmm. will, he also, will he also go away? You see, he wasn't worried about those that left and went back. He asked the ones that remained, he said, are you also going to go away? Are you going to go too? You understand? That's what he asked them. He wanted to see where their loyalty were. Their loyalty was with him or their loyalty was in the world where the rest of the many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. You understand? So it's not a new thing that has happened during the time of Christ because during the time of Christ, you had many that followed him, but you also had many that left and went back into the world. Because why? They didn't believe. Why? Because they got offended. Why? Because they were betrayers. And he knew. Jump up to verse 61. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 61. Start at verse 59. Watch this. Verse 59. Come on. These things said he in the synagogue. Because when he, whenever he was in the synagogue, he was teaching. That's what Christ was doing. The whole time, Christ wasn't shaking and jiving, playing games. He was here to do the Father's business. So likewise, don't get distracted when people leave, or when people get offended, or when people get mad when the correction comes and they cannot handle the responsibility that comes with it. Don't, don't worry about that. Okay, read. As he taught in Capernaum. You see that as he taught them the laws of God. What did they do? They got offended by it. Read. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? Who can understand it? This is a hard saying. Who can understand what he's saying? Read. When Jesus knew in himself, mm -hmm. his disciples murmured at him. You see that? He says he knew within himself that they were complaining. So, because sometimes we talk to you, you understand? We say something to you. Inside you are complaining because you, but because you can't say it out loud. But we can see you complaining. Me, I can see. That brother be complaining. On the inside. That sister be complaining. On the inside, but you are you are hiding. You think we can't see? We can see it, man. We can see that you are complaining, you murmuring, you hate the instruction, you hate whatever it is that you're supposed to do to glorify the Most High. You will hate it with a passion, but you just you just can't say. It. You're gonna find another escape also and be gone. You understand? Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. It's not a new thing. You understand? Hold on to this book. Go ahead. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at him, mm -hmm. he said unto them, Does this offend you? You see that? Does this offend you? He was asking a rhetorical question because he knew. I give the murmur in the previous verse. So he knew that they got offended, that hence the murmur. Okay? And those are the many that left and went back into the world. But what you need to understand is that the, those that were with Christ, they were loyal, man. The twelve. Then they wasn't shaken by none of that stuff. People came and left. Guess what? They remained in this truth. They didn't walk away. They didn't say to hell with you niggas. They didn't use an escape doctrine to go back to be buried in some woman's coochie. They didn't do that. They were not responding to the lust of their flesh, man. The woman's coochie didn't control their decision making. Why? Because they are about their father's business. Some smoking cigar weed did not control their decision making. But guess what? With all the classes that have come out, guess what? One year after the other. You understand? Because why? They don't believe. That's what we're reading here. They don't believe what the Bible is saying. They were with us, but they were not of us. That is what you need to understand, man. And you sisters, you must stay in the spirit. Don't be in your, don't be in your emotions about this. You stay in that said the Lord. Because that's how you're going to get delivered. Don't get offended by some somebody does this and that. No, but you know, I feel so. No, no. What does the Bible say? The Bible said this. I'm rolling with this. That's it. People will come and go, but the Lord is forever. Understand that. Give me that in Timothy. Because the Apostle Paul dealt with the same thing. He dealt with the same thing. What I'm trying to show you is that this has happened before. So therefore, it's supposed to comfort you. Give me that in Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Start of verse 1. Start of verse 1, actually. 
the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 1 read we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak you see that that's the job brothers and sisters our job is to bear to carry the infirmities of those that are weak in the faith read and not to please ourselves and not to please ourselves why we're doing this because you can see the sister has a little faith the brother has little faith our job is to encourage and exhort them so that why they continue in the faith okay read let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification for his good to edification how do we please our neighbors we teach our neighbors the laws of god you understand that's how we please our neighbor and by so doing we please the lord read verse five now verse four verse four for whatsoever things were written aforetime time were written for our land so the things what we just read in john the sixth chapter it was written for our land for us to learn you understand read that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope you see that so this is to teach you patience the things that are happening is to teach you to be patient in this walk because this is not a sprint it's a marathon man okay it's a marathon it's not a sprint now give me that in timothy watch this because the apostle paul spoke to timothy about this thing man. second timothy chapter 4 verse 9 watch this the second book of timothy chapter 4 verse 9 you know what start of verse 2 verse 2 uh preach the word he says what preach the word preach the word come on be instant in season. He says, be instant in season. Meaning, if you, when is their season to hear it, be instant with the word. So they get it. Go ahead. Out of season. Even yeah. out of season for them, still teach the word. Read. Reprove. Correct. Rebuke. Rebuke with the laws of God. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He says, you must exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Long suffering is patience. You understand? Long suffering and doctrine. Okay? Read that in Proverbs 7. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's get the doctrine. This is how we rebuke. You understand? We rebuke with the Lord's doctrine. The doctrine of the Most High. Let's get it in Proverbs chapter 4. Come on, read it. Yes, sir. Proverbs 4, verse 1, sir. Verse 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine. Mm -hmm. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. I give you good doctrine. Don't forsake my laws, the Lord is saying. So you must keep the commandments of the Lord and not forsake them. That's how you what? You what? You keep the doctrine of the Most High. That's how you get corrected. That's how you examine yourself. You use the doctrine of the Lord. You don't forsake the laws of God. Because the, the, the doctrine of the Lord is good. So he says, therefore, don't forsake it because it's good. The laws of God is, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It's perfect. It's good. Good doctrine. Perfect, he's saying. That's what he's saying. Okay. Go back. Second Timothy 4. Read verse 2 again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Preach the word. Mm -hmm. Be instant in season. Read. Out of season. Mm. Reprove. He says, out of season, you must still reprove. In season, reprove still. Don't hold back. Go ahead. Rebuke. Rebuke. Come on. Exhort with all long suffering. He says, exhort with all long suffering. Patience. Go ahead. And doctrine. And what? And doctrine. And doctrine. That's what he's saying. So the doctrine is what? The laws of God. The doctrine is what? The commandments of life. Okay, that's how you're gonna be rebuked and exhorted with the laws of God. Okay, go ahead. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. These are the times we're living in, where they will not endure. You see, the key word is endurance. He says the time is gonna come. What time? The last days. He's saying in the last days, some will not endure sound doctrine. What they're gonna do? They're gonna say, mm, "This is too hard." You understand? Now. What they say? The blue and gold chains are off now. Mm. Mm? The blue and gold chains are off. Finally, I can do whatever I want. You understand? 
because the blue and gold chains are off. You understand? Because they were in prison because of them. You understand? Read that again. The, book of, the second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. For the time will come. The time will come. Come on. When they will not endure sound doctrine. When they will not, they will not endure sound doctrine. The sound doctrine is what? The perfect law of liberty. The laws of God. They're not going to enjoy that law. They're going to say, this is too much. I've been holding on for too long to hell with you. To hell with this Bible, I'm going to go back. That's what they say. You see by their actions, man. Give me that in 1 Samuel 2 verse 3. A man's character is judged by his decision making. Okay. Read what you got. The first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Watch this. Talk no more exceedingly proud. He says, talk no more so exceeding proudly. Read. Let not arrogancy come out of thy mouth. Don't Read. let arrogancy come out of your mouth. Arrogant towards the laws of God. Read. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. For the, because the Lord is a God of knowledge. Read. And by him, actions are weighed. By him, actions are weighed. Actions are weighed. You see that? The most I only cares about that. So go back. Second Timothy 4. Verse 3 again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. Watch this. For the time will come when they will not enjoy some doctrine. Yep. When you think, because well, sometimes when you read this, you think it's the few. No, now that's the time we're living in. This is the time when they we're gonna see some men and women that will not endorse sound doctrine. They're gonna what they're gonna say, no, it's too much. Is too restrictive. You understand? I can't do nothing. I want to do this, they say, thou shall not. I want to do this, they shall not. Damn it, I can't do nothing. You understand? Blue and, Jane, uh, blue and gold chains off. Now I can do what I want. Read. But after their own last... That's it right there. The reason why they don't want to endure the sound doctrine is because why? They are chasing after their own last. That's why. Sarang 18 verse 30. The most High God gave us a law here. Sarang 18 verse 30. Read what you got for. The prophet Jesus chapter 18 verse 30. Watch this. Go not after thy last. That's the commandment. That's a commandment. He says, go not after your last. Don't go after your last, man. Whatever your last is, that will end up pulling you back into the world. The Lord says, don't go after it. Because the reason why he says, many of the, his disciples went back and walk no more with him is because they were pulled back into the world by their own lust that they never walked, they never went on. It's not because of anything. Don't be fooled. The reason why somebody is going back into the world is because of their own lust. They did they they could not they could not endure not fulfilling it. So they said, you know what? I'm gonna find an escape here to go back. If I do this, obviously I'm gonna be put out. So therefore, that's my way out. You understand? It's all because of lust. Lust is a driving factor when, you make, when men and women make decisions like that. Read that again, verse 30. The prophet is yes, chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust. Go not after thy lust. Read. But refrain thyself from thy appetite. But you must refrain from your appetites. What are those appetites? Women's coochie, cigarette, weed, Lying, you understand? Being double-minded, not being sincere, you understand? Being double-tongued. Guess what? That's your that's an appetite. The Lord says, don't go after your lust, and but you must abstain yourself from your appetites. Read. If thou givest thy soul the desire that please her, you see that you give your soul the desires that please her. The hair is your lust. What's gonna happen? She will make thee a laughing stock to thy enemies. You see that she, she, your lust will make you a laughing stock. Those appetites that you want to refrain from, they will not make you a laughing stock. Understand that, read. She will make thee a laughing stock to thy enemies that malign thee. You see what the, that's what the Bible. That's what the Bible is saying, man. So when they went back, it was because of lust. When you don't want to see counsel, or when the counsel gets is received. You take 80%, you throw it in the garbage, you say 20%, I'm good. Guess what? You fall under this also. Because you're going after your last. That's your last. 
Sugar is like a powder, powdered sugar in a glazed donut. That's what you are. Powdered sugar in a glazed donut. You understand? Go back. Second Timothy 4. Verse 3 again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure some doctrine. Read. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You see that? It says, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Because they're going to they gonna what? They're going to vibrate in that frequency because why? Is that frequency of sin. Whatever appetite they are in, they will vibrate in that frequency of that appetite to fulfill it. Okay, read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. That is right there. You see, the key is what? The reason why they went back into the world is because they are turning, they, are, they don't want to hear the word of God anymore. The word of God, what is that? The laws. It says, they will turn away their ears from the law. Because agree, counsel bring counsel. Counsel is the laws that you are given. So when you turn away your ear from counsel, it means you're tired of hearing the laws of God. So therefore, you're going to find some way out. So that's why it says they, what they, will, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into faith, unto fables, meaning lies. Because I get it, sin is deceitful. It's pleasurable for a moment, but that's the deceit of sin. For with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Get that in Thessalonians. Okay. Second Thessalonians 2. Verse 10. The second book, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. You see that the deceit of sin. Sin, sin is deceptive. Sin will deceive you. Because sin. Will, 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 will block your ears now from hearing the truth and you are going to be turned unto fables. Read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That is the same thing we just read, man. They will turn away their ears from hearing the truth because they don't want to receive the love of the truth. Meaning what? They don't love the truth anymore. Now they love lies. What is the lies? The pleasure that comes with sin. That's the lie. Read. That they might be saved. That they may be delivered when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And for this cause. And because of this, read. God shall send them strong delusion. The strong delusion is the lies you tell yourself. The, irrespective of how many counsels you receive, how many questions you get asked, guess what? <laughs> Is you get you tell yourself lies to continue in the sin, in the last. Okay, go ahead. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. That's why it says shall be turned unto fables. He's saying the same thing. Okay, he was writing to the church of Thessalonica. When he was writing to Timothy, he was writing to the church of Ephesus. Okay, go back. Second Timothy four. Read verse four again. The second book Timothy chapter four verse four. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth mm -hmm. and shall be turned unto fables. They shall be turned unto fables. Because when they turn away their ears from the truth, they reject counsel. That's what it means to turn away your ears from the truth. You're rejecting the counsel of the Lord. You're rejecting the counsel, and this is what you're doing. Give me that in Zacharias. Okay. Yep, Zacharias. Chapter 7, verse 11. Start of verse 8. Watch this. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 8. Read. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, mm -hmm. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. When we execute true judgment according to the laws of God, Israel don't like that. Okay, read. And show mercy and compassion. And when we show mercy and compassion, they still don't like it. Because to, to them, mercy is what? I'm going to show you, because here they're going to say, but when did they show me mercy? No, we gave you counsel. It's called mercy. We give you counsel that you don't feather yourself into that black hole that you dug yourself into. 
That's the mercy. But the Israel's version of mercy, you know what it is? We give you license to continue in that sin and we don't correct you. We don't say nothing to you. That's mercy according to Israel. That's mercy according to our people. That's how they see mercy. For them, mercy is what? We allow you to continue in the sin. That's not mercy. That's hatred. Mercy is when you are, what? You are taught the laws of God so that you are, you, are, you are taught the laws of God that you repent. That's mercy. Hold that. Give me Titus 2. Titus 2 verse 11. I'm going to show you the mercy that the Lord has given unto us. When the scriptures are coming out, we're having classes, we're having councils and all that. That's the Lord's mercy. Read. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. For the mercy of the Lord that bringeth forth deliverance. Read. And appeared to all men. All the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Teaching us that. This is what mercy is supposed to teach you. Mercy is not supposed to give you license to sin. So you know what, they, what that means? They are really in Christianity. Yes, they are really in Christianity. Christianity, you understand, with a Hebrew twist. It's Christianity with a Hebrew twist because if we allow you to bring evil up in here and we don't correct you, we don't, we don't put you out to teach you a lesson to make proper decisions. That's not mercy according to you. But when we say, listen, this is what you have to do in order for you to see the importance of the application of God's laws. Oh, that's not mercy. To them is hatred. You understand? But the grace of the Lord that's supposed to bring salvation that appeared to all men teaching us what? Teaching us that. Denying ungodliness. You see that? That's what mercy is. The job of mercy is to do that. To teach you to deny ungodliness. That's mercy, man. Read. And worldly lusts. You see, the same lust that we're just reading about in 2 Timothy. Worldly lusts. The same lust that the Lord says, go not after. Go not after your lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Read. We should live soberly. That's what grace is supposed to teach you. To live, to be sober-minded. To make sound judgment and decision. Read. Righteously. Righteously. Keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Luke 1 and 6 real quick. That's what mercy is about. Mercy is not us giving you license to continue in the same. Mercy is what? It's us teaching you the laws of God so that you repent and get your mind right. That's mercy, man. Because under Moses, you were, you were put to death right then and there. So if you don't see the mercy now with this, when we're reading the scriptures, that means you're truly in love with that last that you in. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God. They were both righteous before God. Read. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Blameless. That's what we're supposed to. That's what grace is supposed to teach you. To walk in all the commandments of the Lord and ordinances. Blameless. Go back. Titus 2 verse 12 again. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 12. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Denying ungodliness. That's what grace is supposed to teach you. To deny ungodliness. Read. And worldly lust. The worldly lust is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You understand? We choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Read. We should live soberly, uh -huh. righteously, Go ahead. and godly in this present world. You see that? Righteously and godly in this present world. But in this present world, in this time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. That's what's going to happen, man. We went over this many times. Guess what? It's happening. You know how many times we brought up, the, 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 the class was brought up to say, listen, man, you men, make sure you find yourself, you are wandering around, you are busy, you are idle. Next thing you think about an ex-girlfriend. This is where, these are classes that have happened months ago. But guess what's happening now? You understand? Now go back, Zechariah 7. Read verse 9 again. The book of Zechariah chapter 7 verse 9. Read. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. Read. Saying, mm -hmm. execute true judgment. According to the laws of God. Read. 
and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. You see that mercy and compassion is what? Is what we read in Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. The mercy of the Lord. Read. And oppress not the widow. Don't oppress the widow. Read. Nor the fatherless. Nor the fatherless. Come on. The stranger. Mm -hmm. Nor the poor. Go ahead. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. That's what the Bible is saying, man. That's how we show mercy and compassion. Next verse. But watch this. Read. But they refused to hearken. But they refused to hearken. How do they? How do you refuse to hearken? You just choose not to follow the counsel. That's how you refuse to hearken. Meaning what? To help with the mercy and the compassion in verse 9. Read. But they refuse to hearken uh -huh. and pulled away their shoulder. You see that they pulled away their shoulder like this. That's what Israel does, man, in the spirit. You touch them, don't touch me. That's, that's how they, that's what they are in the spirit. They don't want to do nothing, man. And when you show them proud, this is what the Bible says. Are you going to apply this? They say yes, but they know they are lying through their teeth. They look you straight, dead straight in the eye. They say, yes, sir, I know what I'm doing. Read. But they refuse to hearken. They refuse to hearken. And pulled away their shoulder. They shoulder. pulled away their shoulder. Read. And stopped their ears. You see that they stopped their ears. That's why it says they will, they will, they will turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Read. That they should not hear. Not, they should not hear what? The law. Because the problem is the laws of God. It was the problem that then when we came out of Egypt, it's a problem today in spiritual Egypt. Read. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They made their mind as an adamant stone, meaning rebellious, thick-headed, hard-hearted, you understand, and stubborn. Read. Lest they should hear the law. Use, that's the key. They, they think they can hear everything else. The thing they don't want to hear is the law. Don't come with that Bible, man. That's why when we had camp, we teach about Deuteronomy 28. Everybody be gathering around us. The minute you read, there isn't why, what must we do to come out of these conditions. People live one by one. You know why? Because they don't want to hear the law. Because as a people, we hate law, we hate order, we hate structure. So now, the minute we hear the law, that means, Urari, the sin that I was involved in and indulging myself in, that means I must stop that thing now. I must not do that anymore. I must repent. They say, no, I don't want to hear it so I don't have to be responsible to not to do, to do it. So I'd rather leave. That's why. That's why they leave. Because that means that if I sit here and hear it, I now have to be responsible now. I have to stop Breaking that law that I used to break because that says the law. But the minute you walk away, you say, if I don't hear it, I don't have to do it. That's the point. If I don't have to listen to it, that means I don't have to hear it. Therefore, I'm not responsible for it. Therefore, I can continue like I don't know nothing about this. That's why it's done that way. Go ahead. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent his spirit by the by the former prophet. You see that they don't want to hear their, the reason why they don't want to see the prophet is because they know the real prophets of the Lord come with the law. So that's why it says what they don't want to hear the prophet, the spirit of the prophets that was sent in the former times. They don't want to hear that. So that's why they are okay going to the Christian church is fine. That's why they're okay to go back into the world because why? They don't, want to have, they don't have to hear the law. Every Sabbath, oh my God, it's always the same thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. <coughs> you understand? Give me that bottle of water, please. Every Sabbath, they keep reading, thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Every Sabbath, they be doing the same thing over and over. I'm tired of hearing that. You understand? Thank you, please. You understand what I'm saying? I'm tired of hearing them. That's really what they're saying. You understand? That's really what they're saying, man. Okay. That's what they're saying. <clears throat> We're tired of hearing that Bible. Every Sabbath, but they are always, they cannot teach something else. They're always teaching, love your neighbor as yourself. 
They're always teaching the royal law, the royal law. They are always speaking about this royal law. I hate the royal law. <laughs> we want to hear some deep stuff. No, I'm going to stay right here. The royal law, love thy neighbor as thyself. You understand? We had a class, don't be a liar. Guess what? The Negro, no, to hell with that class. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What? To hell with that class. I don't care about that. You see my point? So the, what I'm showing you is the problem is the law of God. That's the problem. Read that again, verse 12. The book of, the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 12. Read. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, mm. lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Read. Therefore, came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. You see what's going to happen when you reject and pull away, you pull away the shoulder? you thinking you, you, you basically rebelling against me. No, you're not rebelling against me. You're rebelling against the man that sent the spirit through to bring the scriptures out. That's who you're rebelling against, not me. That's why it says what? Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. So the wrath is not going to come from me. The great wrath will come from the Lord. So guess what? That means they'll be listening to Tupac too much. Only God can judge me. Yeah, you're right. He says, came a great wrath from the Lord. And when that great wrath comes from the Lord, you're going to be making phone calls now, looking us up where we at. No, we're not going to say nothing, man. <laughs> we're not going to answer the calls. Like, you know, when you decided you're a grown up, you're, you're on your own. You deal with them. Don't make us partakers of your ungodly deeds. Why are you hating your brother as you hate yourself? Keep reading. Next verse. Therefore, it is come to pass that he cried. That as. It is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear. You see that? As he cried, and they would not hear. Go ahead. So they cried. They cried. Watch this. And I would not hear. He said, You see that? He said, Because you don't listen to the prophets. Guess what? When you come and cry to me, I'm not going to hear. Read. Thus the Lord of hosts saith the Lord of hosts. So you see what the Lord is saying? He says, Yeah, therefore I, I'm also not going to hear. Until you refusing to hear my prophets that I send unto you to get it together because you, say, you want to hear from me. Instead of my prophets that I said, you want to hear from because when you reject the scriptures, when we show you, don't be doing this. You do it anyway. You say, No, I don't want to hear from you. I want to hear from the men upstairs. I want to hear from the Most High God Himself. Okay, that life. No problem. The Lord will pay you a visit, of course, and you're not going to like it. That's why it says, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord. He didn't say came a great wrath from the prophets. No, from the Lord. Because he's the one that brings forth judgment. Not me. He does it. So, really, this is love your neighbors yourself as we teach these laws. Okay, chapter 8, verse 16. The book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 16. Start of verse 14. Verse 14. For thus for thus said the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath. You see that? When your fathers provoked me to wrath in the wilderness. Read. Said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. And I repented not. Watch this. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem. It's in these days, meaning in these last days. This is the Lord thought, he says, I'm going to thought to do what good unto Jerusalem. This is it. This is an example of the Lord doing that. Read. And to the house of Judah, fear ye not. You see that? He says, fear ye not. Because verse 10, verse 10, TBS 15, he's saying, I'm going to do you good. Even though your fathers provoked me in the wilderness in verse 14. Watch this. These are the things that ye shall do. He says, these are the things that you must do so that what? I don't bring forth that great wrath in chapter 7. Read. Speak ye every man every man the truth to his neighbor. Meaning the law. Teach the royal law, man. Teach the royal law. Read. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. You see what he's saying? 
Go ahead. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart mm. against his neighbor. You see, he says, don't imagine evil in your heart against your neighbor. Watch this. And love no false oath. Mm. For all these, for all these are things that I hate. He says, I hate these things, the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Say the Lord. Say the Lord. He says, I hate these things, man. But Israel still don't listen. They say you are glutton for punishment. That's Israel. That's our people, man. Even those that are quote unquote, they were among us and all that. Guess what? One ear at the other. Because the thing is, I don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. We are good. Even those that are with us, guess what? When you correct it, because when you go to the streets, we only go until you bring the law. You, the same thing that you see in the street when we teach is the same thing that happens up in here. We only go until now the law starts to be brought out to say, but you're supposed to do this, do this. Then all of a sudden, they, guess what? The offender stays. It jumps up. It jumps up on you. So what's the difference between that brother that's in the world who, who begins to say, but now you're becoming personal. Why are you bringing the law? Now we're going to fight. I don't like you no more because you bring in the law. Galatians 4.16 The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 Come on. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You see that? So now, now your brother is your enemy now because he, told, he tells you the truth. What the hell is this? You Now you become a, a, an enemy to your sister because she tells you the truth. Are you crazy? But that's Israel. Within and without. You would think we're in here, you because we know better, we're supposed to take the correction and say, but you know it's written. But no, it's not the same. It's still the what you're still on nigger mode. You're still a dark. You have not repented yet. So now you become an enemy to your brother because he tells you the truth. What is the truth? The law. Because he teaches you the law. Psalms 119, verse 142. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? What's the truth? Let's get it. Let's get to what the truth is. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Come on. And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So the truth is the laws of God. God's commandments is the truth. So now it says, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the law. Tell you the law. The word tell means to teach you the law. Because I teach you the law, now we're enemies now. Now you pull away the shoulder now. Hmm? You understand? Now you begin to have an evil eye towards me because why? Are you got corrected? But, but that's mercy. But you don't see it like that because you are in your feelings. You don't gotta see the Lord's mercy when the correction comes, whether you tap into your feelings. You must tap into the spirit instead of in your feelings. Why are you tapping in the feelings for? Because when the correction comes, you're supposed to tap in the spirit. So you can be in the spirit when the correction comes out to say, you know what? The spirit was on. Let me get myself together. But you don't look at it that way. You just get mad. You develop an evil eye towards your brother or sister. Because why? They tell you the truth about yourself. And you don't like it. This is not, this, this Bible is not for you to like is for you to obey. This is not a book of like. It's a book of law. The Bible is a book of law, statutes, and commandments. It's not a book of. It's not the book of like and feelings. The Bible is not a book of like feelings and opinions. Mm -mm. The Bible is a book of law, judgment, or injustice. That's the Bible. We don't know each other except for this book. So guess what? When we come together, our job is to do our best to apply this book so we can be on one accord. 
That's what the Lord wants. We're not going to get the kingdom if we don't know how to apply that one to another. The royal law, the civil law, the moral law. We don't know how to apply that to one another. You know why? Because of what? Last. The last of the flesh. That's the problem. You understand? It's called the last of the flesh. Now, watch this. Um, where was I? Go back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Read verse 9 now. Actually, you know what? Read verse 5. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5. I want you to see this thing, man. The second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. But watch thou in all things. Mm -hmm. Enjoy affliction. You see, that's a commandment. He says, enjoy affliction. Enjoy the pain that you're going to go through in this truth. You must enjoy it. He's not saying run away. He says, enjoy. Read. Do the work of an evangelist. He says, do the work of an evangelist. Okay, evangelize. Go out there, teach the gospel, man. Read. Make full proof of thy ministry. Meaning study to show thyself approved of the Lord. Make full proof of your ministry. What does that mean? You must be rooted in this book no matter what. Brother or sister says, me, I'm done. I'm going back. We said to hell with you. We're going, we're going to continue. Because this is not a game. This is a matter of life and death. We want the kingdom. When you go back into the world, you say, no, I want to return back to the matrix. I want to be a slave again. I want to be a slave to the nations. I want to be a slave to my sins and my lusts. That's what you say. Okay, jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. He says, do your diligence to come shortly unto me. Diligence in this book. Watch this, go ahead. For demons have forsaken me. Now, this is the people, this is, these are the men that walk with the Apostle Paul. What is Because we read in John 6 that many of the disciples, they left Christ and went back into the world. The Apostle Paul experienced the same thing, man. Read that again, verse 10. For Demas had forsaken me. Demas was Paul's disciple. He forsook Paul. Where did he go? Back into the world. Read. Having loved this present world. You see that? He loved this present world. Guess what? Remember what we read in Titus 2? Go back to Titus 2, read verse 12. What we must do. What is the purpose of this grace that is being given unto us? You understand? The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That means demons did not want to live soberly in this present world. He didn't want to what? He didn't want to live a godly life. He didn't want to live a righteous life in that present world that he lived in, which is this present world that we're living in now. So Demas went back into the world to what? To go outside of the realm of grace. Because grace is supposed to teach you to deny these things. But Demas, on the other hand, he said, no, I don't want that grace period. I want to go back into the world to fulfill these lusts. That's what he said. Because remember, he, he says we must live soberly, godly, righteously in this present world. Demas, he said, no. I want to live ungodly. I don't want to deny ungodliness. I don't want to deny um, unrighteousness. No, I want to indulge in it. That's why I'm going back. That's why some of you, you're contemplating it. Some of you are thinking about it to say, you know what, I'm going to leave, but I'm still going to be in the truth. Because I'll just watch videos online. I'll sit in my house and watch videos online because I don't want to be mixing with them niggas over there. Some of you are contemplating it right now. You're thinking about it. To say, you know what? It's better that I be at home. I don't want to be driving all this way. I don't want to be coming up in here. I'll rather stay home and I'll watch online and I'll study for myself. Right now, some of you, that's what you're thinking right now. The Lord has you marked. The Lord has a bullseye on you. I'm bringing it out because guess what? The prophets are back. Some of you, that's what you're contemplating right now. That's what you're thinking. Keep thinking like that. Read verse 10 again. 
Read. For Demas has forsaken me. Because Demas has forsaken me. Demas left me. He went back into the world. Read. Having loved this present world. Because when you love this present world, you go back again. You're going to enjoy yourself. But you're going to deceive yourself and tell yourself these lies to say, no, uh, uh, you know what? I have my Bible. I have my apocrypha. I learned what I, I, I needed to learn. I'll just watch online. I'll observe the Sabbath with my house. I will I observe the Sabbath with my wife and my husband. I will observe the Sabbath with my family. I'll be good. That's what you're telling yourself, right? Go, go ahead. Keep reading. And he's departed unto Thessalonica. To the, to the land of the unbelievers. Because Thessalonica had a lot of unbelievers, man. Thessalonica. Go ahead. Christians to Galatia. So Christian, he went to Galatia. Read. Titus unto the Dalmatia. Titus unto Dalmatia. So Titus also, when you read the book of Titus, who the Apostle Paul was writing to, he was a bishop. He also left the Apostle Paul. He went back into the world. You know why? Because he also told himself, no, but I was a bishop, I'm a bishop and all of that. I got this. I know all there is to know. You don't got to tell me nothing. When I go back into the world, I'm not going to break these laws. Guess what? You are wrong. I'm going to show you how wrong you are. Give me Mark 4. I'm going to show you what you just deceiving yourself. Thinking that you got this. Thinking that, no, I learned all I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch this. I get you telling yourself. That's what you're telling yourself. Mark chapter 4. Read verse 18. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And these are they which are sown among thorns. You are sown on thorns. You are sown. You are planted among thorns. Read. Such as hear the word. They, you hear the word of God. You are up in here. You hear this word. Read. And the cares of this world. Stop right there. And the cares of this world. Because that's what Titus cared about. That's what Demas cared about. That's what Crescents cared about. You understand? Having loved this present world. So, guess what? Keep reading. And the cares of this world. And so they were deceived by the cares of this world. Read. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. Because the riches is not just talking about you owning a business or you being a CEO or you owning being a millionaire. No. It's also talking about at the job where you work. They just given you 15,000 extra on your salary. It's the same thing. You understand? Go ahead. The deceitfulness of, deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. Come on. And the last of other things. And the last of other things. Doing what? Entering in. They enter into your spirit. What do they do? Choke the word. So you think when when you go back into the world, you keep these laws? You lie. The Bible is telling you the last of other things will enter in your spirit. And what are they going to do? Choke the word. They're going to choke the word of God out of you. Go ahead. And it becometh unfruitful. Now you become useless to the Most High. He's telling you, right? This is the Messiah speaking. So because you may be deceiving yourself or meditating upon this thought. Thinking to yourself, no, you know what? I don't think I want to mingle with the brethren, the sisters. I'm going to do this on my own. You know, I got this. I've been to camp. I've received counsels. I've given counsels. I've done such and such. I can do this on my own. I go back into the world. I'll be good. I just, I know what to do now. The Bible is telling you that lots of other things will enter in. They will choke the word out of you and you will become unfruitful. It's not an if or maybe, it's a fact the Lord is. This is Christ speaking. The Son of the Most High, God of heaven and earth. That's what he's saying, man. So you can think upon this thing, you're wrong. But guess what? If Satan is on you, you're going to say, nah, not me. Okay, not you. Go back to 2 Timothy 4, man. 2 Timothy 4, read verse 9, 10 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 10. Watch this. For Demas had forsaken me. He says, Demas forsook me. He left. Read. Having loved this present world. He loved this present world. Go ahead. And he's departed unto Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. To the world of the unbelievers. Read. Crescent to Galatia. He went to Galatia. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you? He went to the land of the bewitched. That's where he went. You see that? 
Demas forsook the Apostle Paul, okay, and departed unto Thessalonica where the people don't believe nothing. Now this one, he went to Galatia where the people are bewitched. You see that? Go ahead. Tyrus and to Dalmatia. Tyrus, he went to Dalmatia. He left the Apostle Paul. Ray. Only Luke is with me. You see, the Apostle Luke was dead. Luke was dead. Read. Take Mark and bring him with thee. Uh -huh. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. You see that? So Mark and Luke, they were profitable for the gospel. They were profitable men. They did not love this present world. So you can contemplate it how you want. The reason why this is coming out is because some of you, that's your mindset right now. So the Mosa is showing you you're wrong. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. Because that's what you're telling yourself. So which means you are saying, give me Zephaniah 21. You're saying, Zephaniah wasn't, no, didn't know what he was saying. That's what you're saying then. You're saying Zephaniah was confused. <laughs> that's what you're saying. You can't make this stuff up. You understand? Because of Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. You see that it says, gather yourself together. That's the that's the command, that's the law. You do understand that, right? This is a commandment. He says, gather yourself together. The Mosai is not asking. He is commanding us, gather yourselves together. Read. Yea, gather together, or nation will desire. Because the nations that are around about us, they don't desire us. Therefore, they're going to create an environment for sin to thrive so that the lusts of other things will enter into your spirit. Read. Before the decree bring forth. Before the Lord returns. Read. Before the day pass as the shaft, mm. before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. So that means when you don't want to do that, you say, I want to face the fierce anger of the Lord. That's what you say. Only God can judge me. Read on. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Use before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. The Lord is saying, gather yourself together. Go back to 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, um, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Watch this. And Tychicus, Tychicus, and Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. He sent Tychicus to Ephesus, where there was what? The spirit of Jezebel was over there. Read. The cloak that I left at Troas. Troas. The cloak that I left at Troas. With Caiphas. With Carpus. With Carpus. Mm -hmm. When thou comest, bring with thee. He says, bring with thee, meaning bring the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus. Go ahead. And the books. The Bibles, the books of the law. Come on. But especially the parchment. The parchment. Parchment means scrolls. Paper. Scrolls. From the stones it went to scrolls. So that's what he's talking about when he said parchment. Read. Alexandra. The cop the corpus me the corpus me did much evil. You did me much evil. So Alexander, who was laboring with Paul, he did Paul much evil. How about that? Keep going. The Lord rewarded him according to his works. You see that? You see what the Lord he rewarded him according to his evil works. Read. Of whom be thou be thou aware also. He says, be aware also of him. So he's writing to Timothy because Timothy was going to be what? Timothy is pushing the word. But he says, be aware of Alexander because he did me much evil. Be aware of him. So when we say that brother right there, you know, watch that brother, man. It's not because we're just making, no, it's written in the book. <laughs> Read. We have greatly withstood our words. You see, he said, there it is. He pulled away the shoulder. He says, he what? For he had greatly withstood our words. He says because he greatly withstood our words. Meaning he was combative. He was rebellious. <coughs> you understand? He pulled away the ear. He pulled away the shoulder. He made his mind like an adamant stone. He didn't want to listen to what this Bible is saying. Read. 
At my first answer, no man stood with me. You see that? He says, at my first answer, no man stood with me. Nobody backed me up. You see that? Meaning when he was correcting the brother, nobody backed him up. Everybody was sitting on the sideline because you know why? They also have some safety net so that the day when they decide to go back into the world, we don't speak about it so far. The brother was right here with us. No, he don't want that. It's called plausible deniability. You understand? It's called a contingency. Contingency talk and contingency action. That's what that is. Read. But all men forsook me. Yes, but all men forsook me. The same way Christ, the men forsook him, for the Apostle Paul went through the same thing also. They left him. They left the Apostle Paul, man. Read. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. He says, I pray to God that it may not be laid to their charge. See, the Apostle Paul was even applying mercy on this. You understand? We said, no, bruh, you're not here, but here's the cancer. No, no, you can tell. Lord. He's withstood in the words that you're giving unto him. You can tell in the spirit when you're talking to me, you don't want to hear this. He's just responding just to, you know, make you finish quickly so he can continue about his business. Read. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. All praises to the Most High. The Most High God, though, is standing with us. Read. And strengthen me. And the Lord will strengthen us. That's why we're still pushing. So don't lose faith, brothers. Don't lose faith, sisters. The mission is a goal. Read that by me the preaching might be fully known. You see that he says that by me the preaching might be fully known. The apostle Paul was like, Listen, the mission is a God, the people will hear this word. So, the same spirit the apostle Paul had, we must move in the same spirit on this day because Christ, the apostle Paul was moving in the spirit of Christ in John 6 63. Down, read and that all the Gentiles might hear. Mm, meaning the scattered Israelites. When it, the Gentiles is talking about scattered Israelites. Get that in Matthew chapter 4. Because I know there's some Christian online who's saying, yeah, no, he's not talking about scattered Israelites. The Gentile is talking about everybody. Let's get the Bible. Yeah, Matthew chapter 4. Read verse 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 12. Come on. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, mm -hmm. he departed into Galilee. Galilee is northern kingdom of Israel. That's Galilee. Come on. And leaving Nazareth, mm. he came and dwelt in Capernaum, Rain. which is upon the sea coast, Rain. in the borders of Zebulon. Zebulon is one of the tribes of Jacob, one of the sons of Jacob. Israelites. Read. And Naphtali. And Naphtali. Naphtali is one of the sons of Jacob. Go ahead. That it may be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet. That it may be fulfilled that was spoken of by Isaiah. Read. Saying, hmm. land of Zebulun. The land of Zebulun. Because in the land of Zebulun, who was staying there? The children of Israel from the tribe of Zebulun. Read. And the land of Naphtali. The children of Israel the children of Israel from the tribe of Naphtali. Read. By the way of the sea. By the way of the sea. Come on. Beyond Jordan. Mm -hmm. Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee of the Gentiles. So the Gentiles, here the Apostle Paul is talking about, he's not talking about the other nations. He's talking about the scattered Israelites. John 7 verse 35. John 7 35. Let's get there because I know there's some doubting Thomas is online. Right now. John 7 35. We are reading John 7 verse 35. The book of John chapter 7 verse 35. Read. Then said the Jews among themselves. Then said the Jews among themselves. Hold that. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Let's see what the Jews look like. What color is the Jews? Then said the Jews among themselves. Let's see if it's those white people in our land today calling themselves Jewish. Let's see if that's them. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Judah mourning in the case there of language. The Jews are mourning. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. The Jews are black. Go ahead. 
unto the ground. Just like Adam. Now go back. John 7, 35. Let's get it. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 35. Come on. Then said the Jews among themselves. Then said the what? Then said the Jews among themselves. Then said the Jews among themselves. Meaning, the black people. Not those white bastards in our land today calling themselves Jewish. Yeah, I said bastards. It's not because I have an attitude. So that's what God says. Zechariah 9 and 6, real quick. I'm not making it, I'm not making this up. Those are not the real Jews of the Bible. Those are imposters in our land right now on this day. Fighting with the Palestinians over there. We who also, that's not their land. They also, they are not on their land. Jerusalem is not their land, the Palestinians. They are just as guilty to be on that land. Read what you got. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 6. Read. And a pastor. And a what? A pastor. You see, Jewish people, white people in our land, Amalek, that's what God calls them. God says they are bastards. Read. Shall dwell in Ashdod. They shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. You understand? Where they have an annual gay parade every year over there. They say that's the Holy Land. Where they have annual gay parades in our land. Go back. John 7 35. The book of John chapter 7 verse 35. Read. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Whether will, where is Christ going to go? Read. That we shall not find him. That we shall not find him. Read. Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the what? Unto the dispersed. The what? The dispersed. The dispersed. Who are the dispersed? James 1 and 1. Will he go unto the dispersed? We going over you to explain you know, Gentiles is not talking about the other nations here in this context. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. James, a servant of God mm -hmm. and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read. To the 12 tribes. To the what? To the 12 tribes. To the 12 tribes. Come on. Which are scattered abroad. Which are dispersed. To the 12 tribes which are dispersed abroad. Scattered all over the world through slavery, colonization, and forced migration. You understand? Where, where we were conquered, we were captured, renamed, chained, enslaved, and sold to North, Central, and South America. You understand? India, China, Japan. Man, I miss camp. Read that thing again, man. The book of James, chapter 1, one. Come on. James. A servant of God. A servant of God. Come on. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes. To the twelve tribes. Come on. Which are scattered abroad. Which are dispersed abroad. Go back now. John 7 35. Now we have better have a better understanding who they are, who, who John was speaking to. Go ahead. Then said the Jews among themselves. The Jews are talking among themselves. Read. Where the will he go? Where is he gonna go? And we shall not find him. Read. Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the scattered Israelites? Where? Among the Gentiles. Among the other nations now. This Gentile part here is talking about the heathens. Read. And teach the Gentiles. And teach the Israelites scattered among these Gentiles. Because that's what he's saying. Will he go unto the dispersed that are among the Gentiles? And teach the Gentiles. Why? Because... They were living like Gentiles and they were called Gentiles because of what? Because of the customs of those nations that were scattered amongst. That's what we're reading here. Tobit said the same thing. Give me Tobit 13 verse 3. Tobit 13 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Tobit chapter 13 verse 3. Watch this. Confess him before the Gentiles. You see that? He says, confess him before the Gentiles. Read. Ye children of Israel. You children of Israel. We just read it. Read. For he had scattered us among them. For he had scattered us among these Gentiles. That's why now we call Gentiles. Read verse 5 now. Watch this. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. and, he will, and he will scourge us. He will scourge us. And he will scourge us for iniquity. For our sins. Read. And will have mercy again. And the Lord will have mercy again. This is the mercy of the Lord right now. Read. And will gather us out of all nations. He will gather us out of all nations, meaning the Gentiles in verse 3. Read. Among whom he had scattered us. Among whom he had dispersed us. 
That's what we just read in John 7. Now, go back now. Yeah, go back to 2 Timothy 4. Read verse 17 again. Now we have a better understanding of what the Apostle Paul was making reference to. He wasn't talking about the other nations here. It's in the book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 17. Read. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. The Lord stood with us. And Emmanuel. Read. And strengthened me. He strengthened our hands and our feet and our minds and our spirit. Read. That by me the preaching might be fully known. You see that? So by the Apostle Paul, the preaching was fully known. Therefore, likewise, today it's our job to do the same thing. Read. And that all the Gentiles might hear. You see that all the scattered Israelites among the Gentiles might hear. Read. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Out of the out mouth of the lion. So the Apostle Paul, the Lord delivered him many times over. Why? Because he did not give up. He kept pushing. He fought the good fight, man. Likewise, we must do the same thing up in here. Don't be discouraged. Brothers dropping out saying, mm, I want to follow after my last. Let them go. Keep it pushing. You understand? This is a battle. This is a war. We must fight. That's what the Lord wants us to do. You understand? Go ahead. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Ray. And the Lord shall deliver me. And the Lord shall deliver me every week. No, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Come on. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Ray. And will preserve me unto and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. When when the Lord when the Lord returns, he said, I'm gonna get the kingdom. Read. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. All praises to the most high. This is beautiful, man. The Apostle Paul is encouraging us, man. He is letting you know all the people that left him, he didn't give up in this truth. He kept pushing. He wasn't discouraged. He said the mission is a go. Give me that in 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. The second book. You know what? Start, start of verse 2, man. Start of verse 2. Start of verse 1. Start of verse 1. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. Thou therefore, my son, uh -huh. be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He says, be strong in the what? In the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You see, the grace he wasn't licensed to say is for you to be strong in the spirit. To teach you to deny ungodliness. But Titus said, no, I want to go back there. Demas said, no, I want to go back there. Christian said, no, I want to go back right there. You understand? He was like Cypher in the Matrix. I want to be rich. I don't want to remember nothing. You know, that's the same mindset, man. You understand? So what we're reading here, when they went back, when they went back, one of them was like, no, no, me, I want to be bewitched. I'm going to Galatia. Get Galatians. Chapter 5. Is it 5? I want Galatians, yeah. Where it says, oh, foolish Galatians. What verse is that? Is it 3? Let's read it. Yeah, there it is right there. Galatians, the third chapter. Read that thing for me. Watch this. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Oh, foolish Galatians. Oh, the Galatians were foolish. What does it mean to be foolish? To break God's laws. That's what it means to be foolish. According to 1 Samuel 18, 18. Write that down. Go ahead. Oh, foolish Galatians. Mm -hmm. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? The Galatians were bewitched, man. So he said, no, I want to go over there where the people are bewitched. I want to go back into the world and be bewitched again. <coughs> Read. That ye should not obey the truth. You see what happens when you get bewitched? You don't obey the truth. You turn your ears from the hearing the truth. Like we read in 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, they shall turn their ears from hearing the truth. That's what we're reading here. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. When somebody don't want to obey the laws of God, they have been bewitched. Read. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth. You know what? You know how he was evidently set forth? 
they discovered that he was black when they got here. That's how he was evidently set forth. They knew he was, they found out he's a black man when they arrived here. That the Jews are black, that God is black. They found out that when they arrived, they said, mm, he's a black man. Evidently set forth, crucified among you. Go ahead. Crucified among you. You see that thing? Hmm. You cannot make this up. Now they are bewitched. They don't want to remember that he's the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. They are buried in a woman's behind. To hell with the real biblical Messiah now. You understand? That's what, who has bewitched you? Cigarette, weed, and women. That's how they got bewitched. Because why? Christ was evidently set forth before them. They said, no, we don't want to hear that no more. Listen, the Bible is a true book. They went back and said, we want to be bewitched now. We don't want to hear nothing. We want to be bewitched. That's what they said by their actions. So go back. Second Timothy 2 verse 1. So then for Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Thou, therefore, my son, uh -huh. be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We just went over grace. You understand? Read. And the things that thou hast heard. And the things that you've heard. The things that you're learning, brothers and sisters, you must guess what? You must store them in your mind and apply them. Read. The things that thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses. Among many witnesses. We went to the streets when I'm at the shops. People are asking me questions because I got fringes on. They're like, hey, we saw you such and such. Yeah. Read. The same commit thou to faithful men. You see, these things that you learn, they are supposed to be committed to faithful men and women. The unfaithful ones, these things must not be committed unto them because they're not going to do nothing with it. They're not going to wake up or raise up their nation with it. They're going to sit on their behind. The Bible is telling you, says what? Is it the same commit thou to faithful men? So that means unfaithful men and women, do, these things must not be committed unto them because they will not be profitable to the doctrine. They will not be profitable to their nation. They want, they, they, the last of other things will choke the word and they will become unfruitful because they are here but they wish they could be somewhere else right now. Read. Who shall be able to teach others also? Do you see that? Because faithful men will teach this to others also. But the unfaithful ones will not do it. Go ahead. Now, therefore. He says, out of all this, therefore, you, therefore, Timothy, go ahead. Your hardness. Endure. He is telling you, you must endure. Meaning, you must be stay in the spirit. Be faithful so that you may be able to teach the things that you've heard among many witnesses. Commit the same to faithful men. Then, by so doing, you must endure because it's going to get hard. That's what he's telling you. They are therefore endure hardness. He didn't say softness. No, hardness. Go ahead. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's why we name the camp likewise. To endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read. No man that war. Because remember, men and women, you are at war. It's a spiritual battle. Every day you're fighting demons up in your spirit. To get rid of them, you slay them with the word of God. That's why you study. That's why you fast. That's why you pray. Because whenever you see something that you know is bad for your spirit, pull out the sword and slay the demon. That's the job. Your quiver must always be full. To quench the fiery dust of the wicked. Your quiver must always be full, man. Read. No man that world entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You see when he says entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, they went back and walked no more with him. Because they wanted to entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. You know what the affairs of this life is? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of Satan. Read. That he may please him. That he, because you forget. Because once that lust is taken over, you have now forgotten who you are here to please. The Lord, because he's the one that called you here. So now you forget that the Lord called you here for you to do a job. Now because the coochie, that coochie juice you can't resist, guess what? 
You say to hell with the most high God. I'm going to drink the coochie juice instead. <laughs> I love it. You see what I'm saying? To a hell with the scriptures. To a hell with the, what the most high God is saying. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. No man that warned. No man that warned. Entangled himself with the affairs of this life. You don't get yourself involved with the affairs of this life, man. Read. That he may please him. That you may please him. Come on. Who had chosen him to be a soldier. The Lord chose you here to be a soldier, so you will soldier on. You understand? That's why the Lord called you here, man. To soldier on. Don't give up because it's hard. Nobody told you this was going to be easy, man. This is not the Christian church when you come up in here, be shaking and jiving, rolling on the floor, foaming at the mouth. No, that's not the place for it. You are here to learn the word of God and be an example to others also. They may come in by your example, both men and women. That is the job for every man. You understand? Go ahead. And if a man also strive for me, for masteries, masteries. And if a man also strive for masteries, mm -hmm. yet is he not crowned? Is he not crowned? Meaning you're not going to be crowned. Go ahead. Except he strive lawfully. You must strive lawfully. You must apply what is written. That is what the Most High God is saying. So the Apostle Paul was showing us in the Spirit of Christ that men are going to leave. Women are going to leave you in this battle. Sisters, you better understand that. Men and women are going to drop you like a hot potato and say, bye. I'm going back in the world because that thing is too nice. I want to taste it again. I used to taste it. Now I miss it. I want to go back to it. To hell with that, say the Lord. You, you understand that? It doesn't matter what, whatever last it is. The reason why men and women return back into the world, don't listen to what, don't listen to nothing they tell you. Whatever, when they speak, it's just, they're just moving lips. They don't say nothing. When I in your mind is like, hmm, that last, me. that last, that's really what you are saying, but you don't want to come out and say it. Really what you're telling me is like, no, I want to go back to my last. I miss it. That's what you say. So the Apostle Paul went over this. Why? Because he understood what's going to happen in the last days. He understood that. And during his time, he understood that was the last days. When Christ died, and return back to the Father, that was the beginning of the last days. The last days is not now. It didn't start now. It started when Christ died and resurrected. That was the beginning of the last day. When Christ was born, that was the beginning of it. We've been in the last days since Christ was born. We're still in the last days. Now it's just the final seconds of the last days. Couple of hours left until the big boom. And then it's time to go home. So the most important thing for us, the sure foundation is what? Keep the commandments of the Most High God. You understand? First Peter 2 verse 2. This is what we must hold on to. First Peter 2 and 2. The first book of Peter, chapter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow the body. You see that? So that's what we must focus on. The sincere milk of the word that we may grow. What is that? God's laws. The milk, the commandments. Next verse. If so be ye, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord, that the Lord is gracious. You, we have tasted that the Lord is gracious, man. The Lord is gracious unto us. Because because of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, we hear now. We remember, we bethink ourselves because of the grace of the Most High God and His Son, the Christ, who died for us. That's why we're here, because of that. If it wasn't for the grace of the Lord that loved us so much, we would all be dead. But because of His mercy and His grace, we're here. So there's no going back, man. Do not go back into the vomit. Don't return back to the vomit, man. Stay focused and stay diligent in this truth. Why? Because you'll get your reward right soon. Don't lose faith. Don't lose your patience. Okay? Sarah chapter 2. Sarah 2 verse 14. The book of 
Read. Woe unto you that have lost patience. You see that? Woe unto you that have lost patience. Don't lose your patience, man, in this truth. Patience is there to teach you perfection. Patience is there to teach you endurance. The job of patience is so that you may be perfect. Hold this. Um, give me that in... Um, because the Apostle Paul, he spoke about this thing. Um, actually, the Apostle James. The Apostle James, he explained this thing. James, the first chapter. He went over this. Yeah. James chapter 1. Read verse 3 now. The book of James chapter 1 verse 3. Watch this. Knowing this. Actually, start of verse 2. Verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. He says, count it joyful when you fall into diverse temptations. Meaning he says, you must, you must have joy. Why? Because the Lord is trying to unearth things in you that must be perished out because you are gold. You are pure gold. It's not that when you come into this truth, you become gold. You gold already. The only thing is the gold needs to be cleansed. The, and for the gold to be cleansed, it must be burned. It must be melted so that you can take all the foreign materials out of it. What's that? That's the sin. The lusts. The envy. The anger. The hatred. Whatever it is. That you already the gold. Don't get it twisted. You gold already. You just need to be go through the processing process. Okay, go ahead. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith Patience. You see that? So the trials is to teach you patience. That is the job of a trial. To teach you to be patient. To develop in you the spirit of patience and endurance. Read. Right? And let patience have a, have a perfect work. The, you see that? The, the spirit, because patience is a fruit of the spirit. It is, but let patience have a perfect work. So patience is supposed to bring perfection out of you. Read. Right? That ye may be perfect. That ye may be what? That ye may be perfect. You see that? Unlike contrary to what the world says. They say nobody is perfect. The Bible says when we go through trials, we go through temptations, and we don't succumb to the temptations, guess what? We enter the process of perfection. Because you're patient enough to enjoy. You don't run away. Read. That ye may be perfect and in time. Meaning you may be whole. Come on. Wanting nothing. Lacking nothing. Go ahead. If any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, come on. Let him ask of God uh -huh. that give it to all men liberally. Read. Right? And I pray that not, and it shall be given him. You see that? So, but the key is verse 2 and verse 3 and verse, verse 2 to verse 4. That's what Sirach is going over. So the job of patience, the job of these trials and tribulations, temptations that you deal with on a daily is for you to develop the spirit of patience, which is a fruit of the spirit. So if you run away from these trials, you're not going to get that fruit of the spirit. That's what the Lord is saying. So he's telling you, you want the fruit of the spirit, for you to get it, you must go through pain first. Because in order for you to get to the, to the, to the patience part, you have to go through, you, you must fall into diverse temptations. Not diverse temptation. No, diverse temptations. Then, not only that, but guess what? You must go through trials. Then, when you enjoy the temptations, you overcome the temptation and you enjoy the trials, then the Lord brings out of you the fruit of the Spirit called patience. So, He's letting you know the, the Spirit of patience is not going to fall on your lap. You must go through pain to get it. You're not going to be that golden wedge of a fear if you don't go through that fire so that you can be melted so the gold, the tin, and the silver can go out. It's not going to fall on your lap. So all this is for the your trial, to try your patience, man. It's to teach you to develop the spirit of patience. Patience is the fruit of the spirit. You're not gonna, it's not going to fall on your lap. That's the point. It's, it's not going to happen like that. You must work for it. <clears throat> you must go through pain to get it. Then when you get it, the Lord sees, okay, he's not running away. You understand? He's fighting. Give me that in uh, Romans 5. 
Romans chapter 5 is 3. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 5 is 3. Watch this. And not only so, uh -huh. but we glory in tribulations also. You see what he's saying? He's writing to the Israelites scattered in Rome. He says, we glory in tribulations. What are tribulations? Trials. That we read in the book of James. Come on. Knowing the tribulation work of patience. So when you're going through a tribulation, when you're going through a problem, the Lord is teaching you patience, man. It's not to destroy you. He's building you up. He's saying you don't have the spirit of patience. So the way I'm going to do it, I have to send the storm your way. So you fight. I'm teaching you to fight. Because you're not going to grow when things are comfortable. How are you going to grow? If everything is handed to you, everything is running smoothly in your life, you are not going to grow. The, thing that you, the things that you trust upon, the Lord must take them away from you. So you grow up. So you focus. So you know how to hold on to this book. You must go through trouble so you know where to go to help yourself to come out of it. You must run to the Bible. Right now, you're not going through something deep or heavy, so you, don't, you think you don't need to run to this book. You don't think so. You don't believe it. Because the Lord has not paid you a visit yet to ruffle your feathers up a little bit. He hasn't done it. So instead of you be doing the rounds and skipping and all that, because sooner or later you're going to must enter into that ring. Sooner or later, you must enter into that ring now. But when you're busy relaxing, you're not exercising, you're not skipping, you're not, you're not making sure that your cardiovascular system is strong. So the day when you say it's time, enter into the ring, you face to the demon, he's trained up. Few seconds, you are out. He knocked you out. Because you wasn't preparing yourself. Okay? Go ahead, verse 4. And patience, experience. So patience to gives you, will teach you experience in this truth. Patience will give you experience of this Bible. Will give you experience of applying this book. Read. And experience, hope. And your experience is what gives you hope. Win me, win me, win me. I, I, I overcame this last year. I overcame this six months ago. I overcame this five years ago. I overcame this four years ago, three years ago, so on and so forth. That experience gives you faith. It's a track record in this truth. It tells you, you overcame that, 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 with the word of God. You held on. Then that experience gives you hope. People that have experienced, those are the people that have faith because they've seen, they've, they've been through it. Okay, read. And hope make us not ashamed. And your faith will not make you ashamed. You cannot be ashamed that you have faith because that's another fruit of the Spirit. Because you see, patience is going to what? It's going to teach you experience. Experience will teach you pain. It will teach you faith. These are fruits of the Spirit here. Read. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Mm. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see that? So the Lord is letting us know. You better go through these trials, man. Don't get mad at the Lord when you're going through trials. No. You get led. That's why it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. That's the same thing we're reading here. What's the difference? Because it's the same thing. Whatever the Lord is going to bring upon you, he says, take it cheerfully. Because why? That means you don't have the spirit of patience, so the Lord is teaching you. You don't have the spirit of faith. You don't have faith. The Lord is teaching you faith. You understand? Because you might, you say like, oh, there's these strange things happening unto me, man. I planned this, this happened. I planned that, that happened. I thought things were going to turn out this way. They didn't. They turned out this way. Who's doing all this? The Lord is doing all this. When you think these are strange things happening unto you, can't you know you, you're partaking in Christ's suffering? That's what you're doing. Give me first Peter. Chapter 4. Yeah, give me first Peter. Uh, first Peter 4, verse 12. Watch this. The first book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 12. Watch this. 
Beloved, mm -hmm. think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you. you see what he's saying? Is don't you think it's a strange thing of these fiery trials that are trying me? Strange things are happening unto me. Strange things are happening around me. You understand? Weird things be going on around me. Like, what's going on? The Mosa is the one that's trying me. You've been tried. And whenever you think these are, it's a strange thing. No, it's not a strange thing. The Lord is with you. You understand? Read. As though some strange thing happened unto, happened, happened unto you. So you think a strange thing is happening unto you. You understand? I came all this way. I dropped everything. Now I'm here. I thought things would happen this way. They didn't. The Lord had a different plan. What is the Lord doing? He's teaching you patience. That means the Lord is with you. Go ahead. But rejoice. But, you, but Matt, no, get mad. Rejoice. Feel sorry for yourself. Rejoice. Hate other people around rejoice. you. Rejoice. Have the spirit of grumpiness. Rejoice. But rejoice. Take it cheerfully. Read. In as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. He says the reason why you're going through this, you are partaking in Christ's suffering. You understand? Read. That when his glory shall be revealed. When Christ's glory will be revealed when he returns. Read. He may be glad also with uh, exceeding joy. You see that? You may be glad also with exceeding joy. So you're partaking in the sufferings of Christ, man. So don't run away when things are taking place. That's why he said in Sarah 2, Sarah 21. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Because men and women, you are here to serve the Lord. What must you do? Prepare the do soul. What? Prepare. Do what? Prepare. You must prepare yourself. For the temptation and the tribulation and the trials, the fiery and strange trials that will come upon you, is prepare yourself for those things because they are going to happen for your benefit. Read. Prepare thy soul for temptation. You must prepare your soul for temptation. Read. Set thy heart right. Get your mind right. Prep yourself. Examine yourself. When he says, get them, set thy set thy mind, thy, thy heart right, meaning examine yourself. Read and constantly enjoy. And what? And constantly enjoy. Because the temptation in verse one is gonna teach you the spirit of endurance. That's why it's there. It's gonna teach you the spirit of endurance, man. That temptation in verse one. That is job. The job of the job of temptation is to teach you what the spirit of endurance, long suffering. Okay, go ahead. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't run away from the trial because your blessing is in up in there. Your blessing is sitting up in there because right now we're going through it. We went through slavery. We're still going through it. <coughs> Apartheid and all of that. We poor at the bottom. The nations hate our guts. We're sick. We are out of shape. We are unfit. We have broken families. You understand? All of that. We're going through all that, right? The Lord says, do not run away from this. He says, don't run away. Don't walk away from this truth, he's saying. Come on. Cleave unto him. Cleave. That's where you hold on to the most high. He says, hold on. Hold the line, he's saying. Read. And depart not away. And don't depart away. Meaning what? Don't go back. He says, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's why he says what? It says, depart not away. Where? Into the world. Don't go back into the world, he's saying. Come on. Cleave unto him and depart not away. Read. That thou may be increased at thy last end. When the Lord, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, you also shall rejoice with exceeding joy. That's what the apostle Peter said. Come on. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Whatever, whatsoever means whatever is brought upon you. Whatever is brought upon your soul. He says you must do what? Take cheerfully. Take cheerfully. But rejoice. Go ahead. And be patient. And be what? And be patient. You see that the whole, the, from verse 1 all the way down is to teach you patience. A fruit of the spirit. Read. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. We, are, we, have, we as a nation, we have been brought low. We've been changed to a lower state as a nation, man. 
Right now we are at a low estate. The Lord says, be patient. Don't be impatient. Keep the commandments. Perfect the rehearsal of my laws. I'm giving you the grace period for you to perfect the rehearsal, to rehearse the righteous acts. It says, prepare yourself for temptation. Rehearse my righteous acts before I return. Read. Really? For gold is tried in the fire. Because it's telling you you are the gold already. Because gold is tried in the fire. How is it tried? When you are chained to a low estate. You understand? That's how gold is tried. We be changed into a low estate with the bottom of all nations. Read. An acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So we are going to be acceptable only if we go through the furnace of adversity. That furnace of adversity is what? The trials, the tribulation. Another thing, another furnace is what? That lake of fire. That's the furnace. It says, guess what? You are going to be purified thereby. So we need this. Don't run away. It says, no, I cannot, I cannot handle it. I'm going back. To hell with you. What are you going back in the world for? For what? What's out there? Nothing, man. You know how many of those that left that are out there because they are fully in their last? And we put them out so that they can get themselves together. Instead, they say no. They don't want to get themselves together when they are outside. Now is now open season for them to do what? To indulge in their last now. You understand? So that is what we read. The Lord is teaching us patience, man. Give me that in um, Galatians 5. Then we're going to close it. Galatians 5 is 22. The book of Galatians chapter 5 is 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The commandments. Joy. You re remember he said, but rejoice. What that mean? He says, when the trial comes, it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take thee cheerfully. What is that? Another fruit of the Spirit. Joy. It says, but rejoice. But be exceeding glad. That's another fruit of the Spirit. It's right there. It says, love, joy. But rejoice. You see that? Read. Peace. Peace is going to give you peace, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Go ahead. Long suffering. Long suffering. That's what it says. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take thee cheerfully and don't depart. Cleave unto him and depart not away. That's the long suffering. Read. Gentleness. Gentleness. You're going to develop the spirit of gentleness, meaning what? Your mind must be what? You must be gentle. Gentle don't mean soft. Gentleness goes into humility. Humble yourself to this Bible. Go ahead. Goodness. Goodness. The keeping of God's laws. Come on. Faith. Faith. Hope. The hope we read, he says you, you know, experience hope in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 down. Experience hope. That's what it is. Faith. Read. Meekness. Meekness. Submission to the laws of God. Go ahead. Temperance. Temperance. You hold on. Endurance. That's temperance. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Come on. Against such. Against such what we just read. Read. There is no law. There is no law against these. That's what the Lord is teaching us, man. Endure. In your patience, possess your soul. How do you possess it? You get these fruits of the Spirit. That's how you possess your soul. Because if you're going through trial, but you like the spirit of joy, you're not going to endure that trial, neither will you overcome it. If you don't have the spirit of faith, you're going through a trial, you're not going to overcome it. Because you have no faith. If you're going through trial, but you don't have the spirit of long suffering, you're not going to endure the pain that you're going to take, you're going to have to go through when you're going through that trial. Because you're going to enjoy it, but for a time, and say, no, it's too much, I'm giving up. So that long-suffering spirit, it needs to be there when you're going through a trial. Long-suffering means endurance. That's what long-suffering is. Endurance. 
That's why it says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. You're not going to be able to do that if you don't have that. So the fruits of the Spirit, they are very necessary for your trials in this truth. You have, you have to have the spirit of joy because if you don't have joy but you have the spirit of endurance, you have endurance but you don't have joy, you're going to struggle. You have joy but you don't have endurance, you're going to struggle too. So you need both. You need all of them to help you so you may overcome. Understand that? Okay? So you must enjoy. You must fight. That's why we're here, to fight. Okay? Give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 verse 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Ray. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. We are prisoners of the Lord. Come on. Beseech you. That you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. You must walk, walk worthy of the call of duty. Walk worthy of your call of duty. We have been called into duty, babe. We are reporting to duty right now. You understand? Read. With all loneliness. With all loneliness. Gentleness. Come on. Meekness. Meekness. These are fruits of the Spirit. Again. Come on. With long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit again. Come on. For bearing one, one another. For bearing one another in love. Meaning what? You must deal with one another according. Apply the royal law. Forbear each other according to the royal law. Come on. Endeavoring. Do, do what? Endeavoring. Doing every, doing your best to fight. Going out of your way to fight. To do what? To keep the unity of the spirit. To keep the unity of the spirit. Come on. In the bond of peace. Another fruit of the spirit. You're not going to get the fruit of the spirit if you don't want to have the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If you don't feel like coming down here. If you don't feel like gathering with your brethren. Guess what? That means you don't want to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Therefore, you don't want peace. Therefore, you don't want the fruit of the spirit then. So he's telling you, when you gather yourself together with your brethren, your brothers and sisters, you're going to receive the fruit of the Spirit called peace. But if you don't, you're not going to have peace in your life. You won't have it. The Lord is telling you right there, you are not going to have peace in your life. The Lord will plague your mind. Read. There is one body. There is one body. Come on. One spirit. One spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One faith of your calling. Christ, the Messiah, our leader, our king. That's what the Lord is saying we must focus on, man. Coming together because it pleases the Lord when we do it. When I, you are in your feelings, you are not pleased. The Lord says, I'm pleased when my sons and daughters gather together. He says, I'm pleased with that. When his sons and daughters don't gather together, he doesn't get pleased with that. So don't despise the days of small beginnings. You must be patient, man. Be patient. Listen and learn so you can grow. Because when that flock comes in, that flock of sheep coming in, you better be ready. They're all going to be looking for a shepherd. So if you don't rehearse right now, you're not going to be able to succeed in what's to come. You have to position yourself to be an asset to your nation. Don't be a liability. Both men and women. It's not just for the men, it's for you sisters as well. Position yourself to be an asset to your nation. Apply the laws of God to your life so that when the, the sisters come in, you're going to be the ones to show them how they're supposed to be. By your example. Alone. By your actions alone, you're going to inspire that sister to come into this truth. By your actions alone, you're going to inspire that brother to come up in you. That's the point. You understand? Okay. So, the topic of the class, because <laughs> I didn't mention it, the topic of the class is never give up. Hold on. We are about to be delivered. Never give up. Hold on. <coughs> never give up. Hold on. Hold on. Never give up.
Yeah, that's the topic of tonight's class. Hold on, never give up. Hold on, never give up. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand, man. All praises to the Most High. Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to pray. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and shall be, be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We pray. Amen. 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 All praises praise to the most. All praises to the most high God, man. I hope you learned. Hope you receive the edification this day. Okay. All praises.